the first part of the timing process is to use the piston stop tool. This has got an adjustable bolt, so you can set the position, then use this lock nut to set it how you want. Basically, it's got to be long enough that the piston just comes and rests against the end of the bolt. So you wind it into position. You can see the thread appearing down there. And just tighten it up. Now, when we rotate that, the piston just rests against it. That's all it needs to do. Okay, so we've fitted our piston stop. We've tightened the nut, the lock nut there. So we now have a reliable position both ways around where the flywheel stops. Now, previously, if you were using the piston stop method to calculate top dead center, you'd have used one of these, which means it's a degree disc and it means taking off the flywheel, balancing it on the crankshaft and marking two points on here. Don't need to do any of that anymore. It's so much easier, more fast and more accurate to do the buzz wangle. So for the buzz wangle, all you do is you rotate the flywheel to the most anti-clockwise position. You screw the buzz wangle into the thread of the extractor. Don't even need to remove the flywheel nut. And we're gonna set this so that the buzz wangle sits roughly flat in that position. Use the screw in the middle to tighten it. So now the buzz wangle's firmly fixed, can't be wobbled. You can even rotate the flywheel using it. Next, you fit the buzz wangleometer which is a digital inclinometer, essentially. We're gonna set it so that it rests against the stop in the most anti-clockwise position. And we're gonna press it twice to zero it. Now, we're gonna rotate all the way around until we reach the other stop. And it says, 50.9 degrees. Turn the calculator on, and we're gonna put in 50.9 divided by two equals 25.45. So now, if we remove the piston stop, and we come round to 25.45 is about there. So then we can make a nice mark there, the top dead center. Now, if we zero this again, press twice, one, twice and it's zeroed let's say we have a timing figure of 18 degrees that we want all you do is you rotate back until we reach 18 and then there we mark opposite the flywheel is our firing point. So when you're strobing, that's what you look to align that with. If, for instance, it was a variable timing system that started at 24 degrees, you wind back to 24. There's another mark there. And that range is what you'd expect to see the strobe as you rev. It would start at 24 and then it maybe would come back to 18 as the bike's revving. It's as easy as that. Unbelievable, eh? Mm.